Cars, a copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Portland Police calling all cars. Attention all cars broadcast 299 regarding a murder. Be on the lookout for a man known as Gas Pipe Jack. Height 5 feet 9 inches. Weighs about 175 pounds. This man is armed and dangerous. That's all. Rolls and clear. <laughs> Tremendous acclaim that has greeted Rio Grande's new cracked gasoline is evident by the thousands of comments made to our dealers and by the many letters written to us. Letters from intelligent buyers or fleets of commercial automobiles and trucks. Letters that back up the great acclaim made for this new, totally different gasoline by your city, county, and federal law enforcement agencies. Here's what Mr. O.W. Hollingsworth of Coastline Truck Service Incorporated, Los Angeles, said. We use your crack gasoline almost without exception, and we honestly believe it's the best performance gasoline on the coast today. Mr. A.C. Prickett of the American Transfer and Storage Company of Fresno. In changing over to the new Rio Grande crack gasoline, our records show a marked difference in performance. On one particular run, we now use an average of 70 gallons of gasoline compared to 78 gallons of the old-style gasoline on this same haul. Mr. John W. Driscoll of the Glendale Wholesale Meat and Provision Company states, I've had occasion to use most of the leading brands of gasoline in my fleet of trucks, but I sincerely believe your gasoline is absolutely the finest I've ever used. I can hardly endorse it to any and all fleet owners. Just try for yourself the most highly endorsed gasoline ever sold in the West. And you'll return again and again to the red and white Rio Grande station for the gasoline that is first in public service and should be first in yours. tonight has been taken from the confidential files of the police department of the city of Portland, Oregon. We have therefore asked Chief of Police Terry M. Nile to prepare a foreword to our program. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. A sensational crime is often followed by an outbreak of similar crimes. A certain type of criminal, usually illiterate, always vicious, takes the facts of such cases as his inspiration and then devises plans to commit similar crimes, hoping to avoid the mistake the original criminal makes. He is stupid in that, for the original features of a crime are often suppressed by officials in order to forestall just such tricks on the part of the criminal. Such an outbreak occurred in Portland immediately following the arrest of Eddie Worgen, known as Eddie the Hothead. Five days later, there began a series of crimes similar to that of Worgen. But once again, the criminal learned that the first mistake a criminal makes is to begin a life of crime. We shall learn as our program progresses how one man learned this to his sorrow. shadows of late afternoon were beginning to edge their ways over the rooftops of Portland, Oregon, and to settle into the streets below. Through their lowering gloom, a young man, his hardened features partially concealed under the turned-down brim of his slouch hat, moved furtively along the sidewalk of one of the city's less prosperous business sections. He stopped in front of a second-hand store owned by Morris Zelinsky, threw a last cautious glance up and down the street and turned towards the doorway. Good afternoon, sir. I can do something for you, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, you can do something for me. Whatever it is you want. If I got it in stock, you can bet it's the best, mister. If I ain't got it in stock, well, I can get it for you anyhow. Don't worry. You got what I'm looking for in your place, all right? Sure, I wouldn't doubt it. All you got to do is tell me what you want. If it's clothes, I got bargains that would surprise you. All good material. And this week, I have special price I know. And I ain't looking for no new duds. Let me see one of them. Yes. 
Let me see one of them suitcases you got piled up on them shelves at the back of the store. Oh, it's a suitcase, you van I just got the thing. Okay, okay, trot some of them down for me. I come along, I'll show you. I got one back here you couldn't beat anywhere for the price. All durable leather. Yeah, yeah. As I'm uh, getting a uh, dog, wait, I'll turn on the light so you can see better. Uh, never mind that, I don't want no light on, see? Don't want the light, but you can see better. Well, uh, the electric lights bother my eye. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, maybe you should be seeing an eye doctor. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Anyway, you could carry the merchandise up front by the door. There's plenty of light there to see. Now, uh, here's just a suitcase for a young fella like you. Classy looking. Plenty of floor space and almost like brand new. Yeah, yeah, it looks all right, but uh, I'd rather see that big one up there in the corner. The one on the top shelf. The black one, you mean? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Sure, I could make you a good price on that suitcase. A base while I bring over the step ladder. Sure, take your time. There's no hurry. It's all right. Now, uh, would you mind to hold the ladder for me while I climb up? Huh? One time it slipped and I was for ten days in bed. Oh, okay, sure, I'll hold it. Thanks. I'll have the suitcase for you in two sets. Oh, yeah? That's what you think. Oh. Yeah. How cold. Never knew what hit him. Now, where's that cash drawer? Ah, here we are. Well, not bad, not bad. <laughs> and just like taking candy away from a baby. What a dumb cluck I was not to think of this angle before. Oh. Uh-oh. Coming out of it. Okay, dope. Here's a piece of gas pipe you can keep to remember me by. <laughs> Come in. You sent for me, Chief? Oh, yeah, sure, Captain. Come in and sit down. Yes, sir. Any developments yet on that Morris Polinsky slugging? I'm afraid not, Chief. So far, the boys haven't been able to turn up a single clue. Mm -hmm. They've checked both that piece of gas pipe and the newspaper is wrapped in for fingerprints, but no game. Mm -hmm. That's not so good. No, sir. That thug planned that will, Flaherty. The fact that he lured Zelinsky into a dark corner in the rear of the store, away from the door on the show windows, demonstrates that. Yes, sir. That and the fact that he didn't leave us a clue to work on. Have you had a report on Zelinsky's condition? The doctors at the receiving hospital say it's critical. His skull was fractured, and they seem to think his brain might be injured. I see. If he lives, they doubt he'll ever completely regain his sanity. Well, if that's the case, there's not much hope of Zelinsky being able to give us a description of the man who slugged him. Doesn't look like it. We've got to get that slugger. If we don't, well, I'm afraid there's liable to be more victims. That's true. I want you to detail four plain clues from the job, Friday. Get them up into the north end as soon as you can. There aren't any special instructions. They'll have to think and act for themselves. Yes, yes and another thing. Yes, sir. Uh, make it plain to your men that we can't afford to let that slugger strike again. Because the next time, it may be a case for the homicide squad. <laughs> began the almost hopeless task of tracking down a criminal who had left no clues. A man whose name and description were unknown to the police. A vicious thug, cunning enough to cover his trail and bold enough to walk the streets without fear of arrest. And then, on the day following the slugging of Morris Zelinsky, a stranger walked into a saloon that was situated within the block of the scene of the crime. Hey! Hey, bartender! How about a little service? Okay, coming right up. Boy, oh boy, have I got a hangover from last night. Yeah, well, I suppose a fellow's got to expect him now and then. What'll it be? Uh, give me a shot of whiskey. Any special kind? You want bourbon or what? No, no, a shot of your bar rye's good enough. All right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, boy. Hey, that first drink on the morning after sure goes down hard, don't it? <laughs> yeah? But I'm a diehard. Go ahead, pour me another one. Okay. Well, that one went down a little easier. Hey, yeah. Uh, maybe when those drinks start to take hold, they'll begin to feel more like a human again. You must have been on a bender. <laughs> I was. And boy, did I spend a lot of dough. You did, huh? I'll say I did. But what do I care? There's plenty more dough where that came from. <laughs> You're lucky. I wish I could say that sometimes. Fill it up again, huh? Oh, sure, sure. Even after last night, I still got some of my bankroll left. Yep, he's looking at you. 
Speaking of bankrolls, uh, see the morning papers? Nah. Nah, when I got up this morning, I felt too terrible to even think about reading a newspaper. Some guy grabbed himself off a nice little piece of change yesterday afternoon. Yeah? Only a block from here. How? He uh, slugged Morris Zelensky, a fellow who runs a second-hand store down the street of ways, and cleaned out the cash drawer. Oh, he slugged him, huh? Yeah, hit him over the head with a piece of gas pipe. The guy carried the pipe rolled up in a newspaper. Suppose it wouldn't attract attention, I guess. Well, that's one way of getting dough. Yeah, but only a rat would pull a stunt like that. Oh, well, yeah? Poor old Morris is in the hospital with a fractured skull. They're not even sure he'll live. Well, now, ain't that too bad. Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> how much did the guy get, do you know? No, no, no. The paper didn't say. Looks like they got half the Portland Police Department out looking for him, though. Ah, get him. them dumb cops can't catch nobody. Say, uh, you haven't got a paper here, have you? Mm, sure, somewhere. Yeah. Want to look at it? Yeah. Here. Thanks. And, uh, here, here it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Morris Zelinsky, proprietor of a store located at 3rd and Couch Streets, is in a critical condition at the Mercy Hospital. The rally result of being slugged by an unknown bandit late yesterday. Motive apparently was robbery, but the only clue discovered by police was a piece of gas pipe used by Zelinsky's assailant as a weapon in the newspaper in which the pipe was wrapped. Zelensky was found unconscious in the rear of the store by friend Robert Bloomfield, who has since posted a reward of one hundred dollars hey, to the arrest. Hey, uh, I'd like to get that reward, huh? Say, who is this guy, Robert Bloomfield? What's the idea of him buttoning into this thing? He's an old friend of Morris's. He runs a second-hand store too, over on Second Street, just a block away from Morris's place. Well, no, ain't that something? So this guy Bloomfield runs a second-hand store too, does he? Yeah. Over on Second Street, huh? That's right. Well. And he can afford that reward easy, too. Old man Bloomfield's worth plenty. Oh, yeah? How do you know? Oh, everybody around here knows that. He's been in business in this neighborhood for years. You want another shot? Huh? Oh, no, no, not right now. I just remembered there's an errand I gotta do. Oh, say. Yeah? You mind if I take this newspaper? No, go ahead. I'm all through with it. Thanks. I'll see you later. Robert Bloomfield, huh? Second and couch, huh? this morning that you was offering a reward for information about the guy who slugged Morris Zelinsky. You know something about that crime? Know something? I'll say I know something about it. Well, have you told the police what you know? Of course not. Why should I? Especially after I seen you was offering a reward. Oh. Then you know who did this awful thing to my friend. Well, why else do you suppose I'm here talking to you? All right. Then suppose you tell me everything you know about this frightful affair. Not so fast, brother. Not so fast. There's a little matter of a reward connected with this, you know. Suppose you show me the color of your dough first. Oh, the hundred dollars reward. Now, what do you think I'm talking about? Oh, but I don't keep so much money here in my store. No? Besides, how do I know you're telling me the truth? Uh, you'll know it all right when I get through talking. What do you keep your dough for eight here? Well, in the bank, of course. Oh. Well, if you called up the bank, they'd send a hundred dollars over here to you, wouldn't they? Yes, I suppose they would. But I have no intention of doing anything of the sort. When the men who beat up Morris Zielinski over the head is arrested, then I'll gladly pay the reward. Oh, I get it. You're playing safe, huh? Well, you got some money here, haven't you? How about a little on account? There is just enough money in the register to take care of the ordinary transactions of the store, and I don't intend to use it for any other purpose. However, if you are sincere, and if you have a straightforward story to tell me in connection with the robbery and injury to my friend... I'm sure we can reach some agreement which will be satisfactory. Okay, okay, skip it, skip it. Come on in the back of the store. I'll tell you who slugged Morris Zelinsky. In the back of the store? But why there? It was in the back of the store that Yeah, Morris... yeah, yeah, I know all that. I want to get out from in front of those windows. I don't want nobody to see me in here. But why not? Because it ain't healthy to do some things in public. Oh, oh, I see Oh, you mean there are certain people you don't want to know you've been talking to me? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it. Sure. All right. We'll go in the back then, if you don't see. Come on. Okay, swell. After all, I certainly don't want you to get into any kind of trouble for doing me a favor. Yeah. I kind of hope you'd see it that way. Yeah. Is this place all right? Yeah. Yeah, I guess this is far enough back. All right. 
Are you prepared now to tell me the name of the man who beat my friend so cruel? Sure. Sure, I'll tell you the name of the man who slugged Morris Zelinsky. You stupid fool, it was me. You? you? Yeah, me, and this is how I... <laughs> Besides this, you can have this pipe for a keepsake, too. Same as your pal. <laughs> Now, my fine feathered friend, we'll have a look in that cash there of yours. That'll be as much there as there was in old man Zelinsky's anyhow. Well, say, this is all right. Business must have been booming for you, sucker. <laughs> you know something? I'm getting to like this racket better and better all the time. <laughs> I knew that if we didn't catch that thug in a hurry, he'd slack again. Who's on this Bloomfield case? No American, aren't they? Yes, sir. I'm expecting them to report back here at headquarters most any minute now. Well, let's hope they found something worth reporting. I talked to Knowles over the telephone a little while ago, Chief, and he says there's no question but that Bloomfield was slugged by the same man who attacked Morris Zelensky. Well, I'm naturally inclined to accept that view myself on general principles. But has he got any tangible evidence to prove it, sir? Both Bloomfield and Zelensky were slugged in identically the same manner, sir. Each was lowered to the back of his store and then struck over the head with a section of gas pipe wrapped in a newspaper. In both cases, the pipe and the newspaper were left behind and the money was taken out of the cash drawer. Well, those may be right, of course. But I wish he'd get back here. We've got to get action on this thing before the situation gets away from us. This slugger's put two victims in the hospital already. Yeah. And within a single day of each other. One may never regain his reason, and the other one's probably dying. Well, Broomfield's dead, sir. We uh, just received word. Then it is, Mike. Yes. I tell you, Captain, that... Oh, here in old Merrick's now. I was wondering when you boys were going to get back here. Yes? Have you turned up anything new on that Bloomfield slugging? He's dead, you know. Yes, sir. They told us when we came by the death. Yeah, I think we have definite proof that these two attacks were carried out by the same man, Chief. Oh, isn't that piece of pipe lying there the same one that is used to slug Zelinsky? That's right, Erickson. Well, here's the one we picked up in Bloomfield's place. I'm going to put them side by side on the desk here. Ah, oh, you see, sir? See what? What are you driving at? Both of these pipes are the same size, both approximately the same length, and they're both rusted to the same degree. So what? Well, that indicates to me that these pipes came from the same source. Further proof of my theory that both jobs were pulled by the same man. Well, we're all inclined to believe that anyway. But what does it get us? What have we got that are clues that will enable us to find the man who pulled these two jobs? Knowles, you got that newspaper that's wrapped around the piece of pipe we found in Bloomfield's store? Yeah, right here. I'll unroll it. There you are. Here's our second clue, Captain. You see this ring on the front sheet? Yes. Someone set a wet glass down on this paper, and the mark it left indicates that the glass was of the sort used by saloons for serving whiskey. Well, I'll grant you that, but as a clue, it's too vague for any value. Now, wait a minute, sir. Let me show you the back of this paper. Here, I'll unfold it and turn it over. Now, you'll notice that the back of this paper has been moistened at some time or other. The paper's been stained and lost smoothness, and there's still a noticeable odor remaining. Yes, yes, I get it. Mm-hmm. Someone spread this paper out on a moist surface while reading it. And that odor and that glass ring on the front sheet means that the wet surface was the top of a saloon bar. A saloon, eh? Yeah. But you won't get any place searching through a flock of saloons for a man who stole two pieces of gas pipe from the same junk heap. Oh, that isn't the idea, Captain. I'm going to search the saloons for a man who had a, or still has a certain watch in his possession. A watch? That's right. Robert Bloomfield had the habit of keeping his watch in the drawer of his cash register while he was in the store. Now, that watch was taken when the cash register was rifled by the slugger. And I have a full description of the watch and the number of the movement. Oh, I see. Then you have really got something to go on after all. <laughs> I think we have. And the newspaper clue merely narrows down my search for the watch to saloons in the vicinity where the two crimes were committed. Good work, boys. Just the knowledge that we've any sort of a lead at all is a big relief to me. Uh, to all of us, I guess, sir. <laughs> well, let's get going, Noel. Right. The sooner we find that watch, the sooner we'll have a prisoner. Hey, hey, how are you, bartender? Oh, hello, fella. Did you get over your hangover all right? Oh, boy, not yet. 
I went overboard again last night. Yeah, I know. You are in here for a little while. Was I? <laughs> Still gone if I can remember. Don't you remember coming in around midnight? You had some friend with you. Midnight? No, I'm afraid I don't. The two of you sat up there at the end of the bar. Really? I was working one of the night bartender's shift points, Zeke. Mm. You had a couple of drinks incidentally, you and your friend, and then wandered out without paying for them. Oh, I did, huh? Well, a guy sure does some screwy things when he's cracked. I'll fix it up with you before I leave. No hurry. Say, come here, will you? Yeah. How'd you like to buy a good watch cheap? I got a watch. Yeah, but take a good look at this one. Ain't it a honey? And I'll make you a swell bargain on it, too. It's a nice-looking watch, all right, but I wouldn't have any use for it. Besides, I'm pretty near busted. All right, listen, I'll show you what kind of a guy I am. Watches and money don't mean nothing to me. There's always plenty more where these come from, see? So, look, here's what I'll do. I owe you for four drinks, right? Right. All right, I'll put the watch down on a bar like this, see? And right here beside it, I'll put the money for the four drinks. Now, here's the kind of a sport I am. Take your choice. Whichever it is, we'll call it square. You mean either the watch or the money? Sure, sure, that's right. And there ain't no catch to it, neither. (laughs) All right. In that case, I'll take the watch. (laughs) Okay, fellow, okay, that suits me fine. Uh, Slip me a shot of rye, will you? Sure will. (laughs) <laughs> Thanks. Did you see in the papers where that uh, that slugger knocked off another man? Hmm? This time the guy died. No, nah, I never read the papers much. Say, look, fella. Yeah? I notice there are a lot of strangers in this part of town tonight, and something tells me that they're dicks. You named this. Yeah, detectives, all right. They're sticking out on every pawn shop and second-hand store in the North End. Oh, yeah? You know, I bet the slugger would like to know that, don't you think? Well, if he knew it, he'd lay off that gas pipe racket. Why? Well, it wouldn't be healthy tonight for any man to walk into a pawn shop or second-hand store with a newspaper rolled up in his hand. Yeah, I suppose he'd change his racket, all right. Yeah, Start picking chance. on some other kind of stores. Yeah, I think it would be healthier for the slugger to change his business for a while. Oh, hello, Mr. Jim. Huh? Oh, hello, Wong. Hello. Look, I bring you back your shoes, see? Oh, fix you up very nice, you see? Yeah, that looks fine, Wong. You showed up that, uh, that tear under the coat sleeve. Oh, yes, yes. Tear all sewed up very neat. Yeah, I also make a clean, plushy suit. You like it? Oh, it looks okay from here. Hand it across the bar to me, will you, Wong? Yeah, yeah. All right. Here, you take it. Uh, hey, you did do a nice job. How much do you? Uh, how much all? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How much is that? Yeah, 30 cents, 30 cents. Uh, well, that's cheap enough for work like this. <laughs> Here you are, Wong. Oh, yeah. Well, I thank you, Mr. Jim. You'll catch him more suit, get him clean in place, see? Wong do very fine. Okay, Wong, I'll remember that. Good night. Yeah, yeah. Good night, Mr. Jim. Chink Taylor, huh? I thought they were all laundry men or cooks. This is a new one on me. I know. Wong's a pretty good tailor. Oh, He's got yeah? a lot of customers around here. Oh, probably makes quite a bit of dough, huh? I wouldn't be surprised. The little shop over at Second and Ankeny looks pretty prosperous. Second and Ankeny, eh? Just a block away, and a guy told me once the chinks don't keep their dough in banks. What'd you say? Huh? Oh, I was just thinking out loud. I guess a bad habit, don't you think? Yeah. Uh, another drink? Huh? No. No, not right now. I got a couple of things I got to do. Oh, say, uh... Huh? You threw that newspaper? I'd like to read what it has to say about the slugger, if you are. I could buy one of your own sometime. Sure, take it. <laughs> well, I'll buy one sometime. Uh, I'll just fold it up and slip it in my pocket if you don't mind. Not making any chances of the detectives picking you up for the slugger. What? Huh? Them dumb cops? <laughs> don't make me laugh. Well, I'll be seeing you. Yeah. Good night, fellas. Good night. Think Taylor, huh? Well, what do you know about that? And only a block away, too. <coughs> hey, hey, look where you're going, will you? Hey, what's the matter? Oh, come along. Uh, Sorry, old fellow. Oh. Well, that's all right. Hello, Jim. Oh, hello, Erickson. How's the trick? Uh, Pretty good. Uh, you want a little of the customary poison? No, thanks, Jim. Nose and I are working tonight. Oh. Hey, who was that hard-looking gorilla that just went out? I don't know who he is. He's been dropping in here pretty regular for the last few days. I admit he looks kind of tough, but he acts okay. What you do for a living, you know? No, I haven't the faintest idea. But he seems to have plenty of money. <laughs> Watches, too, I guess. Watches? What do you mean? Well, I uh, see this watch here. He laid that on the bar alongside of the price of four drinks that he owed me and told me to take my choice. I took the watch, naturally. Beauty, isn't it? Let me see that watch. Sorry, I take it. By George Erickson, it matches the description to a T. I'll open the back and we'll make sure. What's it all about? Uh, 14, 3, 56, 7, 8, 1. That's it. That's a watch, Erickson. 
That fellow we bumped into gave you this watch, did he, Jim? Yeah. You know where he was bound for when he left here? I haven't the faintest idea. He said he had a couple of things to do. Huh? What were you two talking about just before you went out? Oh, I don't know. We talked about the slugger that's been operating around this neighborhood. That's about all. What does this bird have to say about the slugger? Well, I don't remember very clearly. Seems to me he said something about uh, the slugger changing his line of business, seeing as how you detectives were watching all the pawn shops and secondhand stores. So that'll be the smart thing for him to do. I think. Uh, it's anything good. else? Any mention of any other line of business? No, nothing that I can hear. No, no. no. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we're talking about the uh, uh, Wong, that, that Chinese tailor over at Second and Nankini. Uh, this fellow suggested that Wong might be making a lot of money. That Good it... Lord, come on, Nose. There's yeah. still a bare chance that we can keep a Chinese tailor out of the morgue. All right, all right. Cut the serenade, Bing, and come on over here. Oh, oh, good evening. You're a tailor, ain't you? Yeah, yeah, tailor. You you like me make a nice suit for you? Huh? Or maybe so, fix up not very good suit you wear. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. That's just what I need, a new suit. Oh. Uh, let me see some of that cloth you got in those shelves back there. Yeah, yeah, you, you come look, you see. I catch a very fine pattern. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, you, 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 you look this. Uh, you lucky this one? Huh? Very sporty. Uh, Maybe so. You lucky this one better. No, no, no stripes for mine. Two years of that was enough. Uh, let me see that other bundle there. Oh, uh, oh, this one? No, 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 that other one. Just turn your back at... Yeah, 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 that's it, that's it. Oh, yeah, I see now. Yeah. All right, I'll get you off the shelf. Yeah, here. this is what you'll get, you... No, oh, I... Before you hit him, I'll show you, you yellow heel. I forgive you, I forgive you, plenty. Yeah? You, you, you know, can hit me with the pipe. Oh, yeah? Well, I'll show you some real no, fancy no. fiction. Fighting won't do you no good, because I'm going to keep that hard skull of yours with a skin on my face. Oh, my eyes. Oh, no, you can't. Let's go. 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 let us go let us Oh, yeah? We've got enough on you to put six men in prison. Oh, yeah. What? And that's not counting the murder charge. Yo, 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 just a minute, please. I've huh? got idea. What is it? Yo, yo. You, you let him go back in the room with Wong all along, see? No more pipe. Wong, Wong might fix him. Wong if fix him plenty, China style. Yeah, that sounds like a swell idea, huh? Wong. Wait a minute, you can't do that to me. No, I'm an American that. citizen, see? I got my rights and I'm going to protect them, too. Yeah, I wish oh, I, I could let you do it, Wong. Nothing would be bad enough for this yellow rat. I, I, I fixed him good, see, for hitting me with his plight. I fixed him good all the time like a china. The more I think of the idea, the better I like it, Wong. No, but when you better it. hurry up and call the wagon, Nose, before oh. I yield to temptation. You're done with no. In just a moment, we shall hear the concluding facts in our story. For the last six years, Rio Grande cracked gasoline has been tested and proved by the exacting drivers of police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and emergency equipment in the cities and counties of California. These men who know have found it to fulfill all their demanding requirements. Let's drive into a red and white Rio Grande station tomorrow and give this new liquid dynamite an honest trial. <laughs> Jack Carver, alias Gas Pipe Jack, was brought to trial and speedily convicted. He was sentenced to spend the remainder of his life in contemplation of the fact that a life of crime is a losing proposition. Cancellation broadcast 299 regarding a murder. Suspect this case is now in custody. That's all. Rose and Quiz.
your narrator, Frederick Lindsay, bidding you good night for Rio Grande. Next week at this time, Rio Grande will present the case of the Tenth Commandment. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. KNX, Columbia Square, Los Angeles.